So our next speaker, Bill Finley, he's a retired American law enforcement officer who now serves as America's leading liberalologist. Right? He's, he's working, going all over the country, working to cure liberalism. It's a, it's a disease that uh, we hope disappears quickly, right? So he's trying to uh, cure that in our lifetime. His Wild Bill for America videos are seen in over 160 countries and have reached millions. As a popular Tea Party speaker and radio guest, Wild Bill's mission in life is calling Americans back to God and country principles that founded this nation and were the key to the success of the United States. As one of the first Tea Party members, Bill continues his policy of speaking the truth boldly and encouraging others to do the same. Welcome, Bill Finley. Barack Obama says the most beautiful sound in the world is the Muslim call to prayer. I disagree. I think the most beautiful sound in the world is offended liberals screaming like chimpanzees. <laughs> and I have some ideas on how we can trigger that sound from sea to shining sea. Now we have not done nearly enough to make liberals scream, and I cannot think of a better New Year's resolution. Who's with me on that? Well, they say that when you speak in public, you should start out with a good joke. So I was thinking, where do I find a big joke for the tea party? So I went to johnboehner.com. And I got his quote after the last election when he won again. He said, I am so humbled that the people of Ohio gave me another opportunity to continue to fight for smaller, less costly, and more accountable governments. <laughs> How's that for a joke? <laughs> now, when Joe Dugan asked me to come here to speak, he said, don't pull any punches. Tell people what they need to hear. And I intend to do that. I may offend some of you, but I hope that I will also inspire a substantial number of you to step out in some new directions. Now, a lot of people ask me for my predictions for the coming new year. And frankly, I see a real roller coaster ride for this country as the Obama minions work feverishly to set up a totalitarian government before the population wakes up and smells the oppression. <laughs> they will be attacking on all fronts gun rights, freedom of speech, sexual perversion, Islam, the border, the socialist takeover of our health care system, which sooner or later will be used as a political weapon to force people to submit to liberal agendas. But as a man, as a Tea Party American, I relish the battle. And make no mistake about it, we are in the Super Bowl of all battles for the heart and soul of America. Everything the USA has ever stood for is on the line. And for the first time in 200 years, the American light of freedom is in danger of being snuffed out. The enemies of freedom have won a few skirmishes lately. They pushed us back, and that's not good. But you know what's worse? Patriotic Americans who are discouraged and ready to give up. You get their Facebook posts and their emails all the time, and they usually go kind of like this. It's over. Freedom is dead. Big Brother's going to take our guns. We are helpless against the invisible, all-powerful Illuminati, Bilderberg, Rothschilds, whatever, <laughs> who have already decided the next election and the fate of America. Our votes don't count. The courts will rule against us no matter what we do. And if we fight against them, we're all going to end up in the FEMA camps. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Let me tell you something, people. There is no room for talk like that on a winning team. <laughs> what do you think General Patton would have done if any of his troopers had talked like that in World War II? <laughs> now, if you are one of those who want to give up, fine. 
you can quit. But for crying out loud, don't throw ice water on those who are determined to press on to victory. <laughs> Ulysses S. Grant, the great Civil War general, received several frantic letters from one of his commanders who was worried that Robert E. Lee was going to attack him. Grant wrote back, I suggest you spend less time thinking about what Lee's going to do to you and more time thinking about what you're going to do to Lee. <laughs> that quote should be on a banner over the door of every Tea Party chapter in America. The enemies of freedom should be crying about what we're going to do to them, not vice versa. And I have some ideas. The Tea Party has written a million letters, made a million phone calls, and over a million of us have marched on Washington, D.C. Those are all important things, and we need to keep on doing them. But you know what? Personally, I am not satisfied with the results we've gotten. And I suspect that many of you are not either. That's why we're here. So what can we do to make the Tea Party more effective? I have been thinking about ways that we can supercharge the effectiveness of the Tea Party. Now think about this. The special forces of the U.S. military are the most feared fighting units in the world. Why? Because they use unconventional tactics and they tend to strike the enemy where they are least expected. They are small in numbers but well trained and very focused on their mission. They know their mission and are 100% in on fulfilling it, as well as their oath. Now even though our battle for freedom is not fought with bullets, it's fought with ideas, what would happen if the Tea Party was to take a page from the Special Forces Handbook and we became a bit more unpredictable? What if we started hitting back at the enemies of freedom in ways that they do not expect? What if we applied unconventional planning and strategies to the Tea Party mission. Now, I did a video a while back called Tea Party Special Forces where I raised that idea that Tea Party members working in small groups with very specific missions like, for instance, disrupting the cash flow of corrupt politicians. Shutting down their money supply would be like a red-hot brand and iron on their butts and <laughs> might finally get their attention. And that would be a whole lot more fun than writing letters. That video got the attention of Captain Larry Bailey, former commanding officer of the Navy SEAL Training Center in California. Captain Bailey called me and said, man, Bill, that could really work. We got to work together on this. So I have been working with Larry's group, Special Operations Speaks, a team of America's finest Special Forces military commanders retired who are still fighting for the freedom of their country. Most of them live in the Carolinas, and I strongly encourage the South Carolina Tea Party to connect with these guys. And Captain Bailey drove down to be with us today. Larry, would you stand up, let people see you? <laughs> Another problem that I see is that the Tea Party is only a fraction of the size it should be. Tea Party numbers should be doubling every few years. And one big reason our numbers is low is because the media has done a hatchet job on us. And the Tea Party has not done a very good job of fighting back against that. What is the number one lie the media spreads about the Tea Party? Racist. That we're a bunch of racists. And that is a vile, vicious lie. Do you media guys get that or do I need to repeat that? <laughs> cool. They also like to portray us as a mob of angry Americans. And the American people are not attracted to angry people. Well, here's a wild bill bullet of truth for the Tea Party. If we do not take control of our image, the media will control it for us. And it will be ugly. Every Tea Party chapter in America should have a person assigned to work as public relations specialist to build and protect the reputation of your Tea Party chapter in your city. 
Now, we will never get a fair shake from the left-wing media. We will never win them over. And that means we need to make an end run around them to get out where the public can hear our message. Now, how many of you are fed up with the media lies about the Tea Party and are ready to kick their rear ends? <laughs> we need the support of the American people. We need 100 million of them to sign up and be active Tea Party members. Now, many of those people will never come to events like this because they've already been poisoned against the Tea Party by media propaganda. The only way we can defeat that is for us to go out and meet them face to face. I was a speaker at a Tea Party event in Tennessee last year, and we were so far out in the boonies, we didn't even have cell phone coverage. We were out there, allegedly, so that the NSA couldn't find us. <laughs> but you know who else couldn't find us? The thousands of people who were supposed to be there. <sighs> Joe Dan Gorman of Intellectual Frog Legs was there, and we decided that if the Tea Party is going to be effective, we need to start dropping our events right in the middle of enemy territory. My dad was a paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne in World War II, and they did not drop into nice, comfortable convention centers where they were the only occupants. <laughs> they dropped right into Nazi-held territory, and what a difference they made. <laughs> we need to start looking at holding our events in areas where there is a lot of pedestrian traffic where the passers-by can hear the Tea Party message probably for the very first time. And we need to go where there are a lot of ignorant voters. <laughs> College campus would be perfect. <laughs> I am pushing for Tea Party chapters all across America to do God and country festivals, right in the middle of their town. Yeah, down in Florida, they do seafood festivals, they do art fairs and biker rallies, and tens of thousands of people come to enjoy it. Why are we not doing the same thing? Picture the finest people in America, you guys, throwing a bash where every man, woman, and child in town is invited to enjoy good food, good music, Dancing in the streets, there's a novel idea for Tea Party, and to hear inspirational speakers. That is where the Americans can meet the Tea Party and learn that we are not the ogres the media says we are. And you know what? We have been so serious for so long, it would do us some good to get out and have some fun. Good medicine for the Tea Party. I have spoken at Tea Party events from here to California, and they've all been held behind closed doors, well, or out in the boonies, <laughs> where the only people who hear the message are already Tea Party. I am challenging Tea Party America to spend less time in these nice, safe venues, less time in those nice, comfortable chairs, to get out there in the arena where the American people can finally hear what we have to say. Will there be opposition? I hope so. <laughs> because controversy draws attention to the message. We should not shy away from controversy. In fact, we should be stirring it up with all our strength. We should be stomping all over the politically correct nonsense and doing it as publicly as we can. So are you willing to get out there in the arena where you might end up with a left-wing hate monger screaming in your face? I am. If it will boost the effectiveness of the Tea Party and help to save this country. And you know what the Air Force says, if you're taking flack, you must be over the target. Another way to make an end run around the media blackout is the billboard project. 
We now have funding in place for us to put up hard-hitting billboards along busy roads all over the country. One of the first ones is going to be a picture of George Washington with his great quote, no punishment is too great for the man who builds his greatness upon his own country's ruin. Gee, who do you think they'll think of when they hear that? And my personal favorite is that the USA is still one nation under God, whether the bad guys like it or not. What we need now are people with property along those busy roads who will let us put up a billboard. If you can help with that, please come see me at the table. Now another prediction I make for this year is that this is going to be the year of the Black Tea Party. Not a separate entity, but an infusion of black Americans into Tea Party chapters all over the country. With Tea Party stars like Alan West, Herman Cain, Kevin Jackson, Mia Love, Lloyd Marcus, Ben Carson, it's obvious that there is no racist element in the Tea Party. Another reason black Americans will be joining the Tea Party is because of the blasphemous disrespect of God that is openly practiced by the Democrats. Promoting immorality is their number one agenda, and they are arrogantly pushing blacks who have faith in God down a road that they just cannot go down. We, the Tea Party, need to offer those men and women of faith an alternative where their faith is respected and encouraged. And on that note, let's talk about what the enemies of freedom fear more than anything else. The weapon we have that has the power to completely destroy the liberal agendas in America. Every Tea Party event I have ever been to has opened with prayer and an invocation. This one opened the day with a worship service. And I am convinced that it is the Christian presence in the Tea Party is the reason why it is so vilified by the left. Back in the 60s, when the left-wing attack on American values began in earnest, what was the first thing they went after? Prayer in the schools, prayer in the Bible, in the public square. And they've been on a rampage ever since then to eradicate anything that brings God to the national conference. I'm getting the signal here, so I'm going to skip ahead to the fun part. How appropriate that we are here right after the Martin Luther King holiday. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream, and it was a good one. He dreamed of a day when skin color would not matter anymore. A time, a day, when character would be more important than skin color. But when we look at what's happening in the USA today, it's pretty easy to see that Dr. King's dream got hijacked along the way. I believe that racism would have died out in this country a long time ago, except that some people figured out that racism can be very profitable, both financially, both financially and politically. And now, those who are most vocal about Martin Luther King Jr. being their hero seem to be the most race-driven people in America. The left have mastered the art of turning every issue into a skin color issue. Character be damned. Manufacturing racism for political purposes is a big business in the USA, and manufactured racism has been used to hurt the Tea Party from day one. And I think it's about time we did something about that. There's, there's no doubt in my mind that if Martin Luther King Jr. was alive today, the liberal left would spit in his face because he would be such a threat to their political agendas. We are the people 
who practice Dr. King's dream. It is the Tea Party where people are not judged by the color of their skin. And it is Tea Party Americans who believe that character still counts. So today, I am officially announcing that the Tea Party is taking Dr. Martin Luther King away from the liberal left. <laughs> they have disgraced the name of that man for far too long, and it's time to call him out on it. From this day forward, Dr. Martin Luther King is officially a Tea Party hero. And to you race-baiting promoters of division and hatred, you're not getting him back until you renounce your shameful skin color politics and start practicing the politics of character. Oh, the liberal left will go nuts because it means America's <laughs> gonna start asking good questions. Like, why is the Tea Party putting Martin Luther King on their signs? I thought they were a bunch of racists. And finally, we might start getting some honest dialogue about race issues in America. Don't you think it's about time? Yeah. Now this speech is being broadcast all over the USA. So if we step outside and listen carefully, we might hear a strange sound. <laughs> kind of like chimpanzees. <laughs> I am Wild Bill for America. Thank you for having me here. And America, bless God again. <laughs>